Chapter 35. <clears throat> I have a lot of mucus, so sorry about the throat clearing. I'm not going to school today, Ma. You don't feel good? Shirley is standing at the counter drinking coffee. Her face is long and tense. I feel fine, Rachel says. I want to go to the hospital and stay with Grandpa. You can go there right after school. Rachel pushes aside her plate. No, I want to go now, this morning. What? And spend the whole day in the hospital? You can't do that. Why not? When Daddy had that hernia operation last year, you spent the whole day in the hospital with him. That was different. You have to go to school. You can't just skip school for no good reason. Rachel works hard to control her voice. Ma, did you hear what you just said? What? What did I say that was so terrible? I didn't say terrible. I only asked you if you hurt. No. She shakes her head, starts over again. You said I can't skip school. If that's what you want to call it, I call it staying out. You said I can't stay out for no good reason. Grandpa's not a good reason? Who said that? Shirley's cheeks burn along the bone. That's not what I meant, Rachel. Don't twist my words around. I meant you're a schoolgirl. Why would you not want to go to school? What you have to do is go to school. That's what you have to do. But not if I need to do something else that's more important. And who's judging that? I am. I'm judging that. Shirley puts down her, her cup, turns her back to Rachel. She sighs and sighs again. Is she looking out the window? Is she thinking? Not thinking. Not thinking? Rachel can't tell. The only thing she can tell is that she wants, with an almost physical need, to be in that hospital room with Izzy. She's heard that when she was a baby and wanted to go outside, she would wrap her head against the window and once wrapped so hard that she cracked the glass. Ma, her voice cracks, Ma, are you listening to me? You, of all people, you're the one who should understand. Shirley turns around. She nods. So go, Rachie. Go, if it means that much to you. Izzy is sitting in the chair by the windows when Rachel arrives. Good morning, Grandpa. He frowns. What are you doing here? What do you think? Checking up on you. Why aren't you in school? He holds his cheek up for her to kiss. Because I'd rather be here. What'd you have for breakfast? Did you sleep okay? Number one question, they gave me pancakes. Too heavy. Number two question, not bad. Any more? Get out your clipboard. Write it down. That's what they all do. Just then, a nurse wheels in a metal trolley with an intravenous bottle hooked up to it. She finds a vein in the back of Izzy's hand and punches into it. I'm Tammy. I'm Izzy. Glad to meet you. She adjusts the rate at the IV solution drip. There we go. She, sh she makes a notation on the chart clipped to the end of the bed. Now, if you want to take a walk, um, your little bottle of goodies has to walk with you, okay? What's in the IV? What's in the IV? Rachel asks. Mostly laxatives. Uh, no, potassium. See you later, sweetheart, she says to Izzy. Another nurse enters, wheeling in a green oxygen tank. Hi, he says. Hi, he says. I'm Martin. Izzy Shapiro. Pleased to meet you. I'll, have, I'll be helping you out with the oxygen, Mr. Shapiro. Having a little trouble breathing, are you? Martin speaks at the same loud pitch that Tammy used. This will help. This will really make you feel more comfortable. 
He fits a clear green plastic mask over Izzy's nose and mouth. A flexible white plastic hose leads into the oxygen check bleh, oxygen tank behind the bed. Martin turns the valves, checking the meter. He writes on his clipboard, You can take this oxygen mask off any time you want to, Mr. Shapiro, but I think you'll feel better with it on. Izzy nods. Okay, thank you. A doctor in a long, starched white jacket enters. Her hair is in one thick braid down her back. A stethoscope hangs from her jacket pocket. She sits down on the bed next to Izzy. I'm Dr. Greenbow, Mr. Shapiro. I have a few questions for you. She has a clipboard in her lap. Mm. You're Jewish, Izzy says. Dr. Greenbow looks surprised. Yes. Rachel is embarrassed. Grandpa, she says. Why did you ask that? I want to know some information. Is it terrible? She's Jewish. That's nice to know. From behind the oxygen tank, his voice emerges, thin, muffled. Dr. Greenbow takes a medical history. Is there a history of diabetes in your family? Did anyone in your family have heart problems? Cancer? What kind? What did your father die of? How old was he? Did your mother outlive him? How many brothers and sisters? When did they die? To Rachel's surprise, Izzy seems to enjoy answering the doctor's questions. I had one brother and three sisters. Samuel, Anna... Bertha and Martha, do you want their birth dates also? The doctor takes down the information. Let me see. What did I miss? Oh, yes. Yes, one. Did you ever have liver troubles in the past, Mr. Shapiro? Izzy pulls down the oxygen mask. Are you inferring that I have little liver troubles in the present? Dr. Greenbow's eyebrows go up. I see that I have to be precise with you. When Dr. Greenbow leaves, Izzy says, She's a very nice girl. Grandpa, she's not exactly a girl. If she's not a girl, then what is she? She doesn't look like a man to me. She's a woman, Grandpa. That's what I said, Rachel, a very nice girl. Grandpa, woman! He waves his hand irritably. Oh, that stuff. Don't start with me. Rachel walks out of the room. Going to the bathroom, she says as she leaves. In the bathroom, she washes. Makes a face at herself in the mirror. Why argue with Izzy now? Use your head, Cooper. She goes back into the bedroom. He's lying on his back, his hands folded over his stomach. There you are. He says, Hall of Nature. Mm-hmm. Is the mask comfortable? What? Is the oxygen mask comfortable, Grandpa? I can breathe better. All day, doctors and nurses are in and out of the room, asking questions, listening to Izzy's heart, taking blood samples, checking his temperature, and his blood and pressure. Everybody writes something down. Did you evacuate today, Mr. Shapiro? A nurse stands ready to write down his answer. Yesterday. Just my house. Well, you haven't lost your sense of humor. Rachel watches, fascinated, as the nurse makes a note on her clipboard. Is she writing that down? Patient retains sense of humor. Rachel's mother comes in the afternoon. Having left work early, her father shows up an hour or so later. Shirley has brought flowers, a bag of sesame rolls, and a washed, paper-wrapped dill pickle. Manny comes with a newspaper and a chocolate bar. What for? Izzy asks for each gift. Put it on the table. Put it right there. They stay with him for the supper hour. 
eating their supper in the hospital cafeteria. Go, Izzy says when they return. Go, don't stay so long. Every time he says it, they stay a little longer. There's an old Marx Brothers comedy on on TV. I've got to see this, Manny says, so they all watch it together. Harpo toots his horn, rolls his eyes. Izzy takes down his oxygen mask to say, That guy, he was something. And he makes a, a Harpo face. They're all laughing when a nurse pokes in her head. You people have a party in here? The next day, Rachel goes to the hospital again. She can't see any difference between skipping one day and skipping two days. But this is the last time, her mother says. Rachel doesn't think so, but she doesn't argue. Not now. She remembers to call Alice Farnham that day. Hi, it's Rachel, Rachel Cooper. Hi, dear. Well, it's been a while. I know. I just... A lot of things have happened. She gives up trying to lead up to, gra to it gradually and tells Alice about Izzy's blunt... Le bluntly about Izzy... And tells Alice about, about Izzy bluntly, briefly. I'll come visit him, Alice says at the end of the call. At her parents' insistence, Rachel goes back to school on Wednesday. As far as they're concerned, she is back in school where she belongs. As far as she's concerned, she belongs in the hospital, and she's only here for the first day. In class, she stays behind for a few minutes, explains the situation with, I with Izzy to, s to each teacher, collects her assignments for the week behind her, and asks for the work for the following week. Most of her teachers are sim uh, sympathetic. A few of them are annoyed, but give her the work. Which is all she cares about. She eats lunch with Helena, tells her what she's going to do. A frown crosses Helena's face, round and smooth face. <laughs> what? Your mother? What is your mother going to say? The same thing my father is going to say? No, you can't. You belong in school, etc. And? And? Rachel shrugs, sighs. I don't know, Helena. They're just going to have to accept it. I can't go to school with Izzy in the hospital. That's all I know right now. After school, she meets Louis and talks to him about her plans. They stand by the building and hug. Rachel pulls her head against his chest. Rachel puts her head against his chest. It seems so good to do that, just to let herself hug and think of nothing. In the morning, she tells her parents she's going to the hospital. You are not, Shirley says. Rachel takes a deep breath. Why do you say that? You know why. Tell me again. Both her parents do, in, t in detail. School for her is like work for them. She has a responsibility to go to school. This is what she does in the world. School is where she belongs. She can go to the hospital every day if she wants to. That's fine. But every day after school. Rachie, we don't... <coughs> Rachie, we don't know how long this is going to go on, her father says. He is trying to sweet reason. The doctor isn't giving us numbers. Now, what if it's a month? Two months? Are you going to stay out of school for two months? Shirley's approach is simpler. She's just stubborn. I don't want her missing any more school, period. End of discussion. But it isn't, because Rachel is just as stubborn. She refuses to give up. She won't, and she can't. It's not a matter now of should and should not go to the hospital, or can or will she. She's going there. She wants to be with Izzy. The whole idea of how long it is going to be is exactly the point. How long will it go on? What if it's only a week or five days? What if two days are all she's got left and she's not there with him? No. With or without her parents' permission, she's going to do this. 
She opens her notebook. Here are all of my assignments. I'm going to keep up with my work. You know I don't have any trouble keeping up. Remember when I was sick? It didn't make any difference. I'll do my homework. I won't fall behind. I promise you, please. She says finally, please just say yes. <laughs>